Fred Film Radio at the AT International Hard Exhibition in Venice. I'm Laura De La Corte, and today we are here with the director of Yurt Dormitory in Section Horizonte, Nehir Tuna. How are you today? Thank you very much. I'm amazing. I'm very excited for our premiere today. Good. Actually, before we start with the deep questions, I have to ask like something about a song that you put in Dormitory in okay. Yurt. Um, almost at the end of it, you have chosen an Italian song by Nada, that is yes. Marco Freddo Che Fa. So how come that you choose this song? Is was your decision or? Absolutely. It's, um, I still don't know the lyrics. I mean, I remember looking up what, what this girl is saying, but what is amazing about that song that when I first heard it, it stuck with me and I didn't know what it was saying. It's just like reminding me a lot of things like unfolding one thing after another it's just like remember reminding me my childhood although it was uh, i never heard it before but there was something to it that was calling me and reminding me all those moments and i thought ah, that will be amazing idea if i can you know use this song um uh, so that's how that's how it happened and from the beginning a lot of people told me that maybe it's better to have like a 90s turkish song like pop song that reminds that era that belongs to that era but i was uh i was like no this is this is it and this is how i you know feel and uh, and i went for it nice uh, yeah. nice i love the nada so that's why i asked you this. Yeah. and okay so let's start with the deepest one you know one of the scene that hit me the most in youth was when actually um Ahmed tries to you know hug his father after that he cut himself and he pushes him away in a bad way actually yeah. so yeah. um what you wanted to portray in the scene and is there you know this kind of distance between the family something that was hard for you to to portray actually um well um Yes, uh, the father uh, is expecting him to be someone else uh, in his in this like new life of choices. It, uh, it brings he's trying to be uh, a, a, an example in his community, and he forces his worldviews to his son and his wife, and and the son tries so hard for a long time up until he understand that his father's expectations are nowhere to be met, and he decides to be his own person uh, at the end he decides that he is no longer willing to pay an impossible price to be uh, to to gain his father's love and and in that scene you were referring to uh, it's an intense moment uh, uh, almost a, a climax a fight between the father and son that sort of like an irreversible moment um and um and uh, and Ahmed is a character who's been watching like soap operas like he's a fan of Manuela and and and, and soap operas uh, come like uh, uh, with with big acting and you know yeah. this like so he envies this this uh, this woman and he's in love with this woman and and then it's like I wanted that to be in a way a little bit more expressive than it should be so it's like uh, the father like you know uh, uh, lets go of him and then he kind of like uh, um, uh, he, you know hits himself in That's the it. bed yeah. so it's a little bit uh, overdone purposefully to uh to have uh, to have that moment to speak with his uh likings his um uh, the, um his um the, the things that he enjoys the most yeah. uh, so yeah and in the scene when the the father you know touches his cut yes. like at the end is like for you uh, he, it has the meaning that he's trying to understand his son right at the end. It's trying to, you know, have a kind of sense of guilt or is something that I imagine there because... <laughs> Absolutely. I wanted to remind the the, uh, the, uh, the spectator to that moment with that cut, the showing, and with the little gesture. Yes, he's looking at his son and, and, and possibly thinking all those things that happened between them and um, 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 I would say yes he's thinking at, at that moment of course and uh, but also very determined to move forward uh, in the way that he knows best okay okay so you know your personal experience in our religious dormitory uh, I think has influenced a bit this this story maybe so 
could you shape more about how your own memories and emotion have, you know, influenced maybe the, the story of Amet? Is there anything autobiographical or? Yes, uh, it is, uh, I would say semi-autobiographical uh, and there were a lot of um, similar moments that I also went through and it was just joyful to revisit those moments, the, the moments that made me who I am today. And it was, it was um, just, um, absolutely uh you know motivating and very like that's what kept me going really uh that that i was able to do something that's very personal and and you are opening your heart and uh so uh it was like a therapy session for me and it, it the development of the film took a while and with the pandemic and all it it, it took a uh, you know, it went on and on. So yeah. we went, you know, uh, so we had a lot of time on the development and financing. So, um, so I had um, uh, more time in, in development, which was uh, quite fun and joyful, I would say. Yeah. So thank you so much, Nair Tuna, for being with us, the director of your dormitory in the section Horizonte. This is La Lorde de la Corte for Fred, the Festival Insider. Thank you thank so much. Thank you very much. much for having me. Very kind. Thank you.